Hello children, we are discussing the chapter 2, Microorganisms, Friend and Foe. In that chapter we have discussed what are microorganisms, what is microbiology, who discovered them, what are the five major groups, bacteria, viruses, algae, fungi and protozoa. After that we have discussed certain useful microorganisms and then harmful microorganisms. In the harmful microorganisms we have discussed the microorganisms cause various kinds of diseases. They cause various kinds of diseases in humans like TB, AIDS, cholera, dysentery, all those are the diseases which are caused by the pathogens, that is disease causing microorganisms. They also cause various kinds of disease in cattle, in animals as well as in plants. Second harmful effect is food poison. Microorganisms when grow in the food, in the cooked food, they spoil the food. They change the characteristics of food, that is they make the food of having a bad smell and bad taste. Next we have discussed Bache, that how we can preserve the food. There are various methods of preservation of food. First is by cooling it, that is by refrigeration. At low temperature the growth of microorganisms is stopped, is prohibited. So we preserve the food by freezing it, by refrigeration method. Next by heating it at high temperature. By heating at high temperatures, the microorganisms got killed and by that we can preserve it from getting spoiled. Next, airtight container of vacuum packing. As we remove the air, in the absence of air, the growth of microorganisms is not there. That means the food preservation can be done. By salting, by sugars, we can preserve the food particles. So these are certain food part me uh, preservation methods which we have discussed. Out of those, where this one more method was preservation, sorry, pasteurization. How that pasteurization was discovered? That was discovered by Louis Pasteur. In that method, the milk is heated at 70 degrees Celsius for 15 to 30 seconds and then it is abruptly cooled down at 10 degrees Celsius. Both things are done simultaneously or one by one. How? First, we abruptly heat it. We heat it at a high temperature so that microorganisms got killed. Then we lower down the temperature so that the reinfection of microorganisms can be stopped. So that is the pasteurization process. After that we had discussed certain advantages of food preservation. The advantages of food preservation are we are preventing the food spoilage by this. We are increasing the time period for the preservation of the food by food preservation methods. Next, we can retain the nutritional value of the food for a longer period of time. Next, we can make them available. We make, can make them make the food items available in the off seasons as well. Now we'll discuss the last topic of your chapter, nitrogen cycle. What is nitrogen cycle? It is the process in which the nitrogen is being fixed, used by plants and animals and then return to the atmosphere. That cycle is known as nitrogen cycle. Or you can say the cyclic flow of nitrogen in the living organisms and the atmosphere is known as nitrogen cycle. Nitrogen cycle has basic five points. The first one is nitrogen fixation. Second one is nitrogen assimilation. Third one is ammonification. Next one is nitrification. And the last step is denitrification. So these are the basic five steps which are involved in nitrogen cycle. The first step of nitrogen cycle is nitrogen fixation. The maximum amount of nitrogen is present in the atmosphere. That is 78% of the total atmosphere gases is nitrogen. So basic reservoir, basic storehouse of the nitrogen is atmospheric nitrogen. That atmospheric nitrogen cannot be used by the plants directly. So plants use the nitrogen in the form of nitrates, in the form of nitrogenous compounds. 
So the first step is the conversion of this atmospheric nitrogen into the nitrogenous compounds which are used by the plants. This conversion is known as nitrogen fixation. The first step of nitrogen cycle is nitrogen fixation. Conversion of atmospheric nitrogen into the useful nitrogenous compounds which can be used by the plants is known as nitrogen fixation. Nitrogen fixation is further of three types. First is biological nitrogen fixation. Biological means living. Where living organism or life is involved. The nitrogen fixation means the conversion of atmospheric nitrogen into nitrates or into nitrogenous compounds by the help of living organisms. Which living organism? We had discussed rhizobium bacteria in the first chapter. Rhizobium is a bacteria which helps in the atmospheric nitrogen fixation and the conversion of that atmospheric nitrogen into nitrates. And this conversion is known as atmospheric nitrogen fixation. So, biological nitrogen fixation. Because the chow, in this, living organisms are helping. Living organisms like rhizobium bacteria and one more organism that is blue green algae helps in the fixation, helps in the conversion of atmospheric nitrogen into nitrates. Those nitrates can be used by the plants. The second is atmospheric. Atmospheric means in which environment plays the role. In which the atmosphere plays the role. And that role is played by lightning. This is environment. Or you can say the atmosphere. Lightning converts the nitrogen into nitrous monoxide then into nitrogen dioxide which mix with water and then nitrates are formed and in the form of rain those nitrates will come into the soil. That's a very lengthy procedure. Just mention the point that lightning converts the atmospheric nitrogen into nitrogenous compounds that is nitrates which are mixed with the soil and this nitrogen fixation is known as environmental nitrogen fixation. The third is industrial nitrogen fixation. That industrial nitrogen fixation is not represented in this cycle. In this nitrogen gas combines with hydrogen gas in industries. To form ammonia and that ammonia is used in the formation of fertilizers which are used in the soil by the farmers beta. these are nitrogenous fertilizers we have discussed in the first chapter crop production and management so these are the three kind of nitrogen fixation the next step of nitrogen cycle is nitrogen assimilation the nitrogen which is fixed biological or biologically or by atmospheric and the conversion of those nitrogen into nitrates that nitrate is taken up or absorbed by the plants through roots then plants absorb them and make proteins out of it those nitrates are essential for the plants for the formation of proteins later on those plant proteins are eaten up by animals and those proteins will make the animal proteins as we are all aware bache, that after water the main structural component of animal and plants is proteins water ko agar hum chhod de bache to water ke baad jo sabse badi cheez hamari body mein present hai wo hai proteins so proteins are the structural components of living cells so plants and animals both require those proteins and proteins are made from nitrates in the plants. That conversion, that usage of nitrates or nitrogenous compounds by the plants and animals to form proteins, to form the structural components that became a part of living organism body is known as nitrogen assimilation. 
जो नाइट्रेट्स बने हैं बच्चों जो नाइट्रोजनस कंपाउंड बने हैं उनका यूज करना प्लांट्स और एनिमल्स के द्वारा ताकि प्लांट्स और एनिमल्स उससे क्या बना सके अपनी बॉडी का एक पार्ट बना सके प्रोटीन्स बना सके अपनी बॉडी का एक स्ट्रक्चरल कंपोनेंट बना सके दैट इज नोन एज नाइट्रोजन एसिमिलेशन द प्रोसेस ऑफ कन्वर्जन ऑफ इनऑर्गेनिक नाइट्रोजन कंपाउंड दैट इज नाइट्रेट्स इन टू ऑर्गेनिक कंपाउंड ऑर्गेनिक कंपाउंड मीन मेज द कार्बन कंपाउंड लाइक प्रोटीन्स दैट बिकम्स अ पार्ट ऑफ द लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम बॉडी इज नोन एज नाइट्रोजन assimilation the conversion of inorganic compounds that is nitrates of the soil into the organic compounds that is proteins that became the part of the body of a living organism is known as nitrogen assimilation so all these steps are involved in nitrogen assimilation The next is ammonification. What is ammonification? When the plants and animals die, when plants or animals release their waste material out of their body, like we excrete fecal matter, we excrete urine. Those fecal matter, those urine, those dead animals and plants will release certain ammon, certain nitrogenous compounds. Those are known as nitrites. those nitrites are formed by the decomposition and that decomposition is done by putrefying bacteria and fungi putrefying means the breakdown of proteins into its constituents is known as putrefication putrefication kya hota hai bachche proteins ko break down karna into the simple substances that is known as putrefication and that simple substances are ammonium compounds those simple substances are ammonium so the animals proteins or the plant proteins after excretion the removal of waste product after death and decay converted into nitrogenous waste and that nitrogenous waste is ammonia and this process is known as ammonification this is the third step of nitrogen cycle that is the conversion of useful plant proteins or animal proteins after the putrefication by bacteria and fungi and the formation of ammonia or ammonium salt is there that is known as ammonia fication that is known as ammonification so the conversion of proteins present in the living organism body into ammonium compounds by putrefying bacteria and fungi is known as ammonification after nitrogen fixation nitrogen assimilation formation of ammonia that is ammonification the fourth step of nitrogen cycle is nitrification as we are aware bache the compounds formed used by the plants are converted into ammonia the conversion of these ammonium substances these ammonium salts these ammonium compounds into the nitrates is known as nitrification formation of nitrates from the ammonia or from ammonium salts ammonium compounds is known as nitrification so the conversion of ammonia into nitrates is known as nitrification it is not a single step process bachche first the ammonia is converted into nitrites by nitrifying bacteria that is nitrosomonas then the nitrites formed are converted into nitrates by nitrobacter bacteria so there are two step process bachche do step hote hain ammonia seedha nitrates mein convert nahi hota ammonium salts seedhe nitrates mein convert nahi hote pehle ammonium salts nitrosomonas bacteria ki help se nitrites mein convert hote hain aur fir nitrites nitrates mein convert hote hain by the help of nitrobacter bacteria बच्चों दो स्टेप है द फर्स्ट कन्वर्जन इज द कन्वर्जन ऑफ अमोनियम सॉल्ट और अमोनिया इन टू नाइट्राइट बाय नाइट्रोसोमोनास बैक्टीरिया एंड देन द नाइट्राइट आर कन्वर्टेड इन टू नाइट्रेट बाय नाइट्रोबैक्टर बैक्टीरिया दिस स्टेप रिप्रेजेंट नाइट्रीफिकेशन इनफैक्ट बच्चे ऑल दीज थ्री स्टेप रिप्रेजेंट नाइट्रीफिकेशन formation of nitrogen compounds that is nitrates from atmospheric nitrogen or from ammonia is known as 
nitrification. The last step is denitrification. D means removal and nitrite means nitrates. The conversion of nitrates into the atmospheric nitrogen by denitrifying bacteria. The example is Pseudomonas. Pseudo starts from P, but P is silent here. It is known as Pseudomonas. It is pronounced as Pseudomonas. Pseudomonas is an example of denitrifying bacteria. The bacteria which converts the nitrates into atmospheric nitrogen again. So the conversion of nitrates into the atmospheric nitrogen by denitrifying bacteria that is Pseudomonas is known as denitrification. But one thing you have to take care of that the nitrates are used in some of them. Then they will become nitrates again. But some nitrates will be converted into the atmospheric nitrogen. And that is known as denitrification. So the denitrifying bacteria converts the nitrogenous compounds. Which nitrogenous compounds? Nitrates into nitrogen gas. And that's how the cycle is completed. We again revise the five steps in this cycle now. The first step is nitrogen fixation. These two are the first steps. The conversion of atmospheric nitrogen into the useful nitrogenous compounds known as nitrates by living organism like rhizobium bacteria or by cyanobacteria that is blue green algae by atmosphere or by environment that is lightning or by industries is known as nitrogen fixation the first step the second is nitrogen assimilation the use the taken up of the utilization of these nitrogen compounds by the plants and then animals for its structural component is known as nitrogen assimilation this is nitrogen assimilation beta. first absorbed by plants then plant may form proteins those proteins are eaten up by the animals as a food then those animals will make their proteins and the proteins are the structural components of plants and animals next third step is ammonification this is the second step and this is the third step that is ammonification after the death of the plants as well as of animals as well as the plant and animal release waste material certain nitrogenous wastes are released into the atmosphere and those are known as ammonia or ammonium salts those wastes the production of that ammonium salts or ammonium waste the ammonia is known as ammonification the conversion of the proteins present in the living organisms into ammonia is known as ammonification next the fourth step this is nitrification the conversion of ammonium salts or ammonia into the nitrates into the useful compounds that is nitrates is known as nitrification formation of nitrates from ammonia is known as nitrification two nitrifying bacteria helps in that first ammonia is converted into nitrites by nitrosomonas then nitrites are converted into nitrates by nitrobacter bacteria Next and the last step is denitrification. D means removal. The conversion of those nitrates into atmospheric nitrogen by denitrifying bacteria like Pseudomonas is known as denitrification. And that's how the nitrogen cycle is completed. What is the advantage of it? Nitrogen cycle maintains the nitrogen concentration in the atmosphere and in the living organisms.